So Le Mans has always produced some incredible cars and the new hypercar class is no exception. But look at this Toyota, this Glickenhaus, this Alpine and then this. Notice the odd one out, this Peugeot 9X8 has no rear wing. It's been decades since we've seen a top flight Le Mans car without a huge rear wing. They're essential in producing downforce and keeping the car on the road. But somehow Peugeot have made this car in a way that actually benefits from not having a rear wing. So sit back and let's dive into this. The new LMH series is designed to produce closer racing and a grid of radically different cars with huge freedom given to the designers. For the previous LMP1 class, things worked a bit like Formula 1. The FIA gave designers a set of tight geometrical restrictions on the bodywork of the cars and the designers have to fit the bodywork within those restrictions. This prevents the teams creating ridiculous downforce or taking things a bit too far. However, this gave us a grid of similar looking cars with big differences in performance, depending on which designers made the best use of the regulations. And thankfully, the LMH class turns this on its head. The new LMH regulations do this very differently. They open up geometric restrictions on bodywork, giving the designers massive freedom to experiment with different car designs and aero concepts. This has given us a variety of very different looking cars that generate downforce in unique ways. But does that mean there is even greater performance difference between them? Well, yes, in normal circumstances, that would be the case. But the FAA have sidestepped this issue with clever new regulations. Instead of placing tight restrictions on the bodywork of the cars, the FIA now mandates precise limits on the downforce and drag they produce. So if you produce too much downforce or create too little drag, your car is illegal. The cars must have a minimum drag coefficient of 1.0 and a maximum downforce coefficient of 5.2. And what is interesting is that the teams have confirmed that these numbers are actually pretty easy to achieve which means that even the smaller teams can design a car that has the raw performance figures of the big budget teams like Toyota. But it also creates amazing looking cars because the teams can go about achieving these figures in very different ways. And that's down to these rules. They allow them to make crazy looking cars that are evenly matched. And Peugeot's 9X8 with its wingless design is among the craziest. So let's take a look at the car to understand how it can work without a rear wing. The bodywork of the Peugeot is very clean without any large aero appendages and of course no rear wing. This gives us an indication of the philosophy of the car. Without multiple exterior aero devices it must be generating the required downforce in another way. Unlike the new 2022 Formula 1 cars all the clever aero work is happening underneath the car. But before we look into what exactly is going on, it's important to realise the challenges the designers face in absence of a rear wing. The aero balance of a car is just as important as the total downforce it generates. Too little downforce on one axle relative to the other will make the car difficult to drive fast and you will lose lots of lap time. So a car without a rear wing sounds like it should be a death trap. So generating balanced downforce on the front and the rear is extremely important. But the Peugeot faces another challenge in achieving this with the new regulations. On a conventional race car, the aero balance can be easily adjusted by changing the angle of the front and rear wings independently. But not only does the Peugeot have no rear wing at all, the FIA mandates that the car can only have one adjustable aero device to tweak the balance. So without the scope to adjust the aero balance by adjusting the front and rear wings, Peugeot designers must ensure that the car's overall downforce is balanced front to rear. But how does the 9X8 achieve this without a rear wing? It's all to do with an extremely clever floor design. At 5 metres long, the new LMH cars are quite large, which gives the designers lots of area to work with under the car. The Peugeot makes use of this with a genius diffuser design that produces maximum suction at the centre of the car. Let's look at how they do it. The diffuser of the 9X8 begins to kick upwards at a point just behind the centre of the floor, which is much further forwards than a typical race car. This is because maximum suction is generated at the flat section of the floor where it is closest to the ground. 
The overall downforce generated by this genius floor design is balanced and powerful enough to offset the absence of a rear wing. And the idea allows the 9X8 to easily achieve the maximum downforce levels enforced by the FIA. So this explains how the 9X8 can do without a rear wing, but it doesn't explain why other LMH cars like the Toyota and the Glickenhaus are able to use huge wings while complying with the new downforce limits. Cars like the Toyota and the Glickenhaus rely more on overbody downforce and look radically different to the Peugeot as a result. However, look closer and it's easy to spot the concepts at play. The Glickenhaus uses the splitter and additional dive planes at the front and a large rear wing to generate downforce. However, the floor of this car isn't as powerful as the Peugeot's and plays less of a role, since both cars must have the same overall downforce level. Using overbody downforce like this has some interesting effects on the turbulent air given off by the car. And you should watch these videos about the new 2022 F1 cars where we fully explain the concept. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the Drive61 channel and I'll catch you in the next video.